Hey everybody, this is The Great Escape and welcome to another episode where I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to build a farm. But as you can see, we are not in our redstone testing world. Instead, we are here in a uh, typical Minecraft world. Uh, we're in creative, but this could be a survival world. Um, and today I'm going to show you how to build a slime farm just like the one that you might have seen in my latest <clears throat> Let's Play. Um, and I'll put a link up in the screen and a description for that if you'd like to see what it looks like in my base. Um, but we're going to, I'm going to show you the, the process of finding uh, your slime chunks and then building your actual slime farm. And we're going to build a really simple version today, uh, but later on I will uh, make a more complicated version using the exact same farm and just making it uh, larger and more complicated. But the farm that I'm going to show you today produces more uh, slime balls that you can possibly use on a single player server um, and let's go ahead and get straight to it all right so before you build this the things you are going to need um, are as follows and as you can see it's not a super uh, resource heavy uh, build it's just a, a, a very time consuming build uh, probably the hardest thing to, to get will be the magma blocks uh, you will need 90 of them if you go with a, a two a double farm um, so this is these are all for a double farm, so you can cut this in half if you're building a single farm, uh, with the exception of the uh, the hopper um, and the mine carts and things like that. Um, but <clears throat> for a double farm, you would need 90 magma blocks, about 32 powered rails. Um, I think only 16 rails, but you know, half stack is uh, safe. Um, around 11 redstone blocks, uh, or you could use levers instead. That would work fine. Um, a hopper mine cart four hoppers uh not a trap chest but uh, two chests um and you can expand that if you'd like a, a larger storage system eight blocks of iron uh, two pumpkins 36 fences two pieces of glass and to uh to light up the bottom of the the spawning area you'd probably need maybe three stacks of torches or two stacks or so uh, but just enough to light everything up all right but so that's your supplies all right, so we're actually starting here online, and if you go to Google and type in slime farm chunks or something like that, you're gonna first link is gonna be chunk base, um, and when you pull it up, it looks like this, uh, and you you need to type in your seed there. Make sure you type in it exactly right, uh, and it will say PC, but that works for the PlayStation 4. But if you're on the PC, Java Edition, whatever, uh, that's gonna be uh, where you can go. And as soon as you type in your uh, your chunk your seed there, and you go to search, it's gonna bring up a map of your entire world and every potential slime chunk that's available. And you wanna find a good one, and here I found two that were right at spawn, uh, or z around zero, but you could see single ones around. So it depends on whether you wanna build a single base or a double base, or a single farm or a double farm. Here we're gonna focus on that sing double farm, and so you are notice the coordinates down in the bottom right-hand corner, write those down. So as you can see from the uh, slime chunk finder, um, the my dog is deciding to play with me right now. <clears throat> oh well. Um, so uh, this is the those double slime chunks that I identified. Uh, notice here 64, 15, and 64, 0. Um, <clears throat> and that goes all the way to... negative 33 0 and negative 33 15. Now <clears throat> you could if you wanted just do this design with uh, one uh, slime chunk and I've kind of shown where those two slime chunks meet right here uh, so if you wanted to do this with just one slime chunk you could uh, but having two slime chunks together like this is going to give you better results. Um, the only difference between this build and a single slime chunk build is that you'd only need one of the iron golem setups. Uh, so when I go through uh, that, um, you would only need to build one on one side. Now, <clears throat> I've outlined the uh, slime chunk here, and if we go down, I've already dug out some. If we go down here, you can see uh, the slime chunk is producing slimes, and it's not in perfect conditions. I haven't lit up all the caves around, um, and I definitely could hear some zombies through here somewhere. Uh, but it's still already producing slimes and um, do not make the mistake I did if you notice this giant unnatural looking patch of sand here uh, when I was initially recording this video I uh, went out to negative 15 instead of positive 15 um, so 
don't do that. Make sure you get your coordinates right, um, and you can do that. Now, the other thing you will want to do is that we're actually going to build this a little bit larger than the chunks. So we want to go out uh, three blocks uh, from the chunk, and you want to put a block there. Uh, this is just kind of mapping things out, and then two blocks from the side. Um, so you're actually going to end up with a square or a rectangle that's about this uh, size here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that border around it so you can see what it looks like. All right, so this is the actual size of the farm here within those gold blocks. Um, and the reason we do this is so that we'll have uh, space to put our, our iron golem traps. Um, and uh, in the future, if you decide to build multiple levels to this farm, which I'll show in a later video, uh, this will make that uh, possible so you don't have to do some digging later on. Uh, now, uh, for the hard part, because this farm is incredibly easy to build, but the actual getting prepared and getting everything ready for it is not. So what we have to do next is we have to take uh, this everything within this uh, gold border here and take it all the way down to y equals 35. Uh, you can take it to 36 or 37, um, but uh, 35 seems to be a good place. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'll be back with you when this is a giant hole in the ground sometime in the future. <clears throat> I'm still in the process of digging out, but I just wanted to show you a uh, quick <laughs> update on the number of slime that are currently spawning here. So I think the farm might work. All right, so once you've dug out your entire hole, it should look something like this. And as you can see, the uh, slime are spawning uh, pretty crazily down there. And I did run into a cave system that I lit up, but um, I'm sure there's much more around this area uh, that is not lit up and yet they are still spawning pretty regularly. Now the reason that we dug it all the way out uh, like this is that uh, because of the way that the uh, the game searches for um, spawnable area, it searches from the bottom of the world up um, through 16 uh, layer chunks. Um, and if we go to 40 where the spawns, uh, the slime starts spawning, uh, you can just kind of dig out a, a three tall area there and you'll get some spawns but to get the maximum number of spawns this is what it's going to look like um, and so our next step is going to be to build our uh, catchment area um, and as you can see I still have labeled off these are the actual chunks where the, sp the slimes spawn uh, these little emeralds and so we've got some uh, space in the sides where we're going to do some of our building um, so let's go ahead and grab those things and uh, get started on building the uh, the trap area all right so if you'll notice there are no uh, s slimes in here now I've turned off mob spawning just so we don't have to deal with the, uh, the jumping around of the, the slimes uh, so what we want to do to to build the trap area is we want to come about halfway between these two spaces here um, so uh, they're 15 blocks apart so one two three four five six seven that should be one two three four five six seven yep so this is our middle spot and we're gonna go uh, back uh, four blocks and then um, go five out from there so one two three four five 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 and then do the same thing All right, so um, what we want to build within that area, and we're not going to use this entire area. I just did uh, took out five so that we would have an easier way to uh, to build and construct. Um, but uh, going from that middle point again, so uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right here, uh, we want to dig a um, area out that's four blocks deep and one two three four five six and seven blocks wide so you'll have two blocks on either side uh, that are open and um, in here we're going to put a rail system so you want to go like this with power rails then uh, regular rails oh and then it's Probably easier if you do it this way. Yep, power rails, regular rails, and power rails. And then um, 
on these two blocks here go ahead and break those out and we'll leave those blank for right now but we will come back in and uh, put something there in a minute um, <clears throat> Now, um, this is where you want to decide what your, uh, con your collection area is going to look like. Um, on my world, I have a, um, an item elevator back there, uh, so you could do something like that. Um, or you could uh, do something with um, a chest. Um, and so that's what we're just going to do for today is with a chest. Um, and so here I'm going to break out a few blocks this way and then like this. Um, and then I'm going to put my chest here and then run hoppers like so into the chest. Um, and then of course we could build a, a, a you know, a, a ladder going up this way to get into that chest if we would like. Um, but that's just one way you could approach it. All right, and then we want to put uh, hoppers on top of that, and then um, you can. It doesn't really matter where you do this, but somewhere around the middle, um, with redstone blocks like this, we want to power all those rails. Um, now you don't have to make everything powered. Uh, you could probably get away with just doing maybe like three powered rails on each row. Um, and that would be perfectly fine. Um, but if you have the materials, uh, you can go ahead and make everything a powered rail like that, and that'll work just fine. All right, now on top of those rails, we're going to put magma blocks. Now I've s you've seen some slime farms that use um, cactuses, and that would also work. Uh, but the only problem with cactuses is you run into the issue of um, some, some of the uh, slime balls would be destroyed by the cactuses. Uh, now, um, in the area right here, so going through the middle, you want to dig out a three high um, block area like this, and then you want to go ahead and dig out this part and then around the outside of that we're going to put some fences like this like that and then um, you want that too high whoops not like that And then right in the middle, um, we're going to put a glass block right there. And that's actually where our iron golem is going to go. Um, so you can go ahead and summon him in if you'd like, um, like so. Uh, one thing you have to be careful of is that he can't, uh, you can't have a, a fence touching him. And then, whoops. There you go. Uh, so you do need that to be um, four high so that he doesn't take uh, suffocation damage. And then go ahead and replace that uh, fence there like so. And now our iron golem is there and the trap is set. So um, if we were to uh, bring the, uh, the slime back in, it would work. Now, uh, I was just using these blocks here as a way to easily get to the um, minecart track. So I'm going to fill the outside in. And then on this side, if we just come in here, you can drop your minecart in and then give it a push. I might have to drop down one, give it a, whoop, a push, there he goes, and um, it'll start taking off, and it's now activated and the system is working, and then you can go ahead and fill these blocks back in. All right, now let me uh, quickly turn on mob spawning, and... In just a minute, we'll see those slimes start coming back into the system and um, spawning into the system. Let me let it reset really quick. 
All right, so as you can see, we're getting some slimes into the system. And uh, currently, any uh, ones that spawn on this half are just going to kind of hop around until they cross about that median level. And then they're going to go over there and try to get to that iron golem. Um, yep, see, they're popping in. Uh, but um, any that spawn on this half automatically go over there. Now, if you we're happy with the system as is. Um, these guys will just kind of hop around. Some of them are going to despawn, but eventually they are going to make their way over here to this guy. Um, and so this is a half efficient farm. It's uh, using this entire space here effectively. See that guy's heading straight there after he spawned. Uh, but these ones over here that spawn are not going to do anything, especially if they just hop around. Uh, but you can see they're going right to the golem and they're going to die. Now, one of the things you might want to do, um, occasionally when they die, their uh, their drops will, you can see there, will pop out to the side here or here. Um, if you want to get a 100% lossless farm, uh, the best way to do that would be to increase the size of the magma blocks out to here on all sides. Um, and then you would also need to do the same thing with the um, the minecart. But if you don't mind losing, you know, one or two out of every, um, you know, it's like 80% efficient uh, at a, the, the previous size. But if you extend it out to this size, then it would be 100% efficient. All right, now the next step will be to um, build the exact same thing over here. Now you can have two separate collection zones and you just drop down into both um, and do that. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to link them up using the same minecart track because the the uh, drops are not going to despawn um, before the minecart track can make one full loop. Uh, but then it'll come back over here and do this. Uh, the only downside of doing that is occasionally when you have long minecart tracks like that, uh, if the spunks unload, the uh, the minecart track could potentially um, stall. Um, so that's something you want to keep an eye on. Uh, if you run into that problem, all you need to do is just do two separate uh, minecart loops like this with two separate collection zones. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and build uh, this again on the other side. And I'm going to go ahead and build it with this slightly larger um, magma block section so we can see how it's a little bit more effective. All right, and I'll be right back. All right, so there we go. We've got our second area done, and I did expand it out to the larger magma block section. I'll show you what I did underneath with the um, collection area and the, um, the minecart track. So if I come down here, you can see oh, I've already got a stack in seven. Um, so the minecart track is going to run there, and it also runs this way. Um, so it actually goes through both areas. Um, and again, you don't use, use power rails necessarily for the entire thing, um, but if you have them, why not use them? Um, and it's just, you know, place uh, a lever or a redstone block every so often to power those rails. Um, and it's going to run back and forth and it'll drop all of the drops into this chest here. Um, so what I'm going to do now, um, and again, I haven't lit up any of the surrounding area. Um, or any of the, you know, the caves or anything like that. I lit up this island and a few of the caves that I ran into when I was um, digging this out. So what I'm going to do is let this run for the next um, 30 minutes and let's see exactly how many drops we get in that time. Oh, hold on. Let me go clear out this chest first. All right, so the chest is empty. Um, so let's run it for 30 minutes and then see what we get. And I'll be right back. All right, so we're back from our 30 minute little AFK session. And as you can see, we have one more little guy going in there. And again, this is not an ideal, um, you know, a situation. You know, I haven't gone through and, and done all of the uh, lighting up of all the caves, everything, but let's go see how well this has performed. So let's drop down in here and oh look at that four stacks and a half in uh in 30 minutes um so you know looking like eight stacks uh eight and a half stacks um in a total of uh, in an hour which is not too bad as i said if you were to have this anywhere near your base or someplace where um, it was loaded more often you would definitely see it as something that would be keep would keep you constantly in uh, slime blocks um, and again so 
Oh, the, the one just popped in. So even in uh, unideal conditions, this is still a very efficient and effective um, little uh, farm. And what I'll do, um, I, I already linked uh, the video to where I showed this in my previous um, or in my survival world, but I'm going to head over into the survival world and I'll end this video over there so you can see uh, what it looks like, um, what mine looks like over there. So I'll be right back. Alright, so here we are on my survival world and we're going to fly over here. Um, it's the exact same uh, type of setup. Um, it's a, also a double slime farm. It just happens to be right next to my base and as you can see um, the, the slime are, are bouncing in. Now this one I haven't built the uh, second collection zone uh, because I just don't need that much slime. But as you can see, in more ideal conditions, um, all of, most of all of the caves around this area are completely um, are completely lit up. Uh, you get much higher spawn rates, but it's still very efficient, and very effective, um, and you can put glass over the top of it, and it won't mess with the spawn rates because this is a transparent block. So as long as the uh, the highest block above the slime farm is a transparent block, you're going to get the most efficient spawning method. And as you can see, that's like the fifth spawn that's gone in since we loaded this up. Uh, this one's just hopping around over here because he doesn't have anywhere to go to. Um, but uh, thank you so much for uh, watching this video. If you learned something or you enjoyed it, please drop a like. Um, and if you want to see more videos like it, feel free to subscribe. Uh, this has been The Great Escape, and I will see you next time.